Doing a compression test is a fundamental aspect of diagnosing any two and four stroke engine. Today's short video, we're gonna cover what compression tests to buy, what to look out for when buying a compression tester, what the values mean, how to set it up, and some of the pitfalls you're gonna run into on the way. Firstly, we'll briefly touch on what compression tester to get and what to look out for as well. Don't make the mistake of using an automotive style compression tester in your small engine because you'll find that the readings will be much, much lower and you can end up chasing your tail because of it. The main difference between the two is that in a small engine compression tester, at the end of the adapter that goes into the spark plug hole, you'll actually find a Schrader valve. And what this does is it stops the tube acting as part of the cylinder volume and giving you much, much lower readings. So regardless of the make, the brand, the cost, just double check it has got that Schrader valve in place. And then after that, the length of the tube isn't really relevant. And of course, in terms of brand, Stens, MightyVac and OTC are all great brands. They all do a very, very good job. I've got a King Chrome one here. It's nothing special. It was not particularly expensive, but it does give me very accurate readings. So firstly, two straight readings. What should we expect? Very commonly across the board, 150 or more PSI is excellent. Between 120 to 150 is acceptable, and then less than 120, you'll probably find the engine won't actually run. With a four-stroke engine, especially an OPE, we'll often find an ACR, and that will release the compression that's formed, and it can be tricky to get an accurate reading. My preference is actually for a four-stroke to do a leak down test rather than a compression test, but a compression test is certainly an acceptable test to be doing, just bear in mind it might be surprisingly low. Around the 70 to 80 PSI is very good and acceptable. 60 or less, you might find that you're running into a bit of an issue. But what I do recommend, if you're doing it on an engine that you know has an ACR, double check the service manual because it will give you the specs for it. Now I'm gonna do this test on this chainsaw. And it doesn't matter whether it's a chainsaw, whippersnipper, leaf blower, weed eater, whether it be a lawn mower, the process is identical. The first thing we need to do is to actually install the adapter and the tube. So in this case, I'll pop the cover off. Top cover comes off. And now we'll take the spark plug out. Unless stated otherwise in your service manual, do the compression test when the engine is cold. We'll take the adapter and we'll thread it in. Again, ensuring that it does have the Schrader valve present. And then with our gauge, we'll just make sure it's zeroed, so we'll release any compression that's built up there. And I'll put the adapter in, or the tube in, to the actual gauge itself. We're gonna turn the engine off, just because it's not good to have spark not going to ground, it's not good for the coil. And then we need to make sure we're at full throttle. Doesn't matter what piece of equipment we're working on, full throttle. I'm gonna hold that in place with my foot now to keep that open. And I'm now gonna pull the engine over as many times as it takes until that gauge stops increasing. I'm now gonna have a quick look at the gauge and we have exactly 170 PSI. That's a fantastic reading for this engine. This is an old engine, though I have revamped it with new rings, I've gone over the whole thing, so that is Somewhat expected, but also it's really good to see anyway. Don't get too hung up with how quickly this needle rises. It might take you 10, 15, even 20 pulls to get that needle to stop. That's not necessarily a reflection on whether you've got good compression or not. It could just be the fact that you're using a much longer tube. And it doesn't need to hold this reading. Don't get confused and think it needs to hold this for a set period of time. It doesn't. It's not a pressure or a vacuum test. It'll hit that number. If it slowly bleeds down, it's just your Schrader valve leaking. It's not a problem. And of course, caring for any tools, make sure you take all the pressure out, put it back in its storage case. Don't drop it. All the obvious things when you're dealing with precision pieces of equipment. So some of you are gonna say, I've got 80 PSI and my two strokes running great. I've got 90 PSI. I don't doubt that the engine's running, but what I do doubt is the accuracy of your compression tester. Like we spoke about before at the beginning of the video, there is a difference between the automotive style without the Schrader valve or one with small engines that has the Schrader valve in it. A couple of other little things. You might find that actually your Schrader valve is present, but the spring is very, very stiff. It's not suitable, again, for small engines. So you might find that you've got the Schrader valve, you think you've got a small engine compression tester, your compression could still be low on that dial, the engine still run, and it could be as simple as the spring 
pressure is too much to overcome and you're getting a low reading because of it. And of course, the compression test is only one of a number of different tests when it comes to diagnosing your two and four stroke engines. And I've actually got a video up here that teaches you how to do a pressure and vacuum test, which is a very different test, only used on two stroke engines. And I hope it helps you out on your journey to repairing your engines at home. Until next time, I'll catch you soon.